Right. Okay, I've got five o'clock on the hour. I'll ask uh, Brother Coleman, or, well, wait a minute, I'm getting ahead of myself. Call this meeting in order at five o'clock. I'll ask Brother Coleman for a, a word of prayer. Let's bow our heads. Father, we just want to thank you today. We thank you for what you're doing and what you're about to do in our great city, Lord. We ask that you to give us understanding, lead us and guide us. And Lord, just touch our community and our board members on the city council and the mayor, Lord, that we'll be directed and knowing exactly what to do. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. All right. Before you have the minutes of the last meeting, uh, I'll ask for a motion to accept the minutes as read. I've got a first. I'll second. Second by Mary Bell. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like say aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Okay, we have some visitors here. Um, Dan Drain. He's our financial auditor, and he's going to do a presentation with us. Dan, do you care to come up and um, explain? Thank you. We've been here a little earlier to do this, but we're uh, we're like so many other people. We're short set. <laughs> this is our audit staff right now. All right. <laughs> hey, I have, have about six or seven of these. Trust today. me, I know. Hey, uh, you will. The staple pages are. Uh, this is called the Sesquicentennial 2014 Report. This is what we're required to give the council, and the reason that we're required to do that is that in a lot of cases, or in most cases, all the work that we do on this field work we do here at City Hall, Lisa and the Mayor and the staff, in a lot of cases the council or the legislative body doesn't know anything about the fact that you've even been on it. So uh, this is pretty much a standard letter. Um, first page, there's the only real significant estimate in this is appreciation. Of course, you know, you, you assign some kind of a value to it and you put the number of years you think and put a method on it. Um, uh, no significant difficulties dealing with management. Uh, no un un uh, unchanged uh, errors or anything in it. No disagreements with management. Uh, we did ask you to give us a letter telling us certain things that's your responsibility. Uh, no consultation with other independent accounts other than the fact that there's a firm in Litchfield that actually does the financial statements before we start on it. So the bound, the uh, uh, bound copy is the actual auto report. It, uh, <clears throat> it begins on really page one. This is a clean opinion. No, uh, no exceptions taken. Uh, we are like a lot of other people. We are reg heavily regulated, and this this report is a little different than any of them that you've had before. It, in substance, it ends up saying pretty much the same thing in a different order. Right. And somebody makes a lot of money, I'm assuming, for for doing this. But anyway, it's a clean opinion. Page four. This is statement in position. This is the this is the balance sheet of the city overall. It has two different presentations. The, uh, the business type activities and you know, the water, sewer, and so forth. 
that part of it is going to be the same always because that part of it is a business activity. You know, if you're you're billing customers and, and it's supposed to be self-sufficient that the revenues cover the expenses, the governmental activities have two different presentations. This one is converted to a basis as if it were business type. So all of your fixed assets on the governmental side, like fire engines, uh, this building, all of that is set up and depreciated. And any long-term debt that you have or pension liabilities is all treated as a, a, a liability. But under this presentation, the total net position of governmental activities, that's you know, it's, it's going to be general fund and road and LGEA and all those kinds of things. Uh, it's just under $5 million. And the business type activities, net position is a 5.3, so the city overall net position is about is ten million two seventy four six fifty eight. Then on page five, this is also in the business like presentation. And if you start with that first column under expenses, so you know any government entity, the first thing that you're that you're here for is to provide services to your people. So you start with those expenses of one point four million, and then to the right, you show how it's paid for. Well, there are very little services for the governmental. You have some grants. Then the bulk of that, had had you not had all these uh, revenues at the bottom, you'd have had about a $278,000 loss. Then you have general revenues of $1,372,067. So changing the net position, the actual net position of the city governmental side improved by $1,094,201. The uh, business type activities, water, sewer, sanitation, had a loss of 98309 So the city overall was had a gain of just under a million dollars. And there's a breakdown later that shows water, sewer, and sanitation separately. Page six is a balance sheet in the way that you would budget the general fund. Uh, you only book current assets, cash, receivables, utility deposits, and the only liabilities are the ones you pay currently. Uh, accounts payable, crew payroll, so forth. And then the total fund balance of these is 3732542 so then bottom it shows how you get from one to the other so you pick up the capital assets and you deduct all of the revenues so this this presentation the fund balance is actually uh you know about uh, a million two less than it is when you do the government the uh, government wide uh, business type and seven is the income statement under this presentation and still not a great deal doing that change in fund balance overall the, the net profit if you will on, on the governmental is a million one eighty eight two thirty four. So it increased from two and a half million to three point seven million. Then page eight is how you get from one to another. A million one eighty eight go uh, this one and the the uh, million ninety four and the uh, governmental or the business like. So then page nine does nine breaks down between water, sewer, and sanitation. Uh, all of these had a positive net position. But when you get over to page 10, and when you look at the uh, income statement, then uh, you show the changes in net position. Water made a little money, sanitation made a little money, and sewer showed a loss of 143789 and That probably doesn't surprise anybody, because no. that's, that's always the one that's the hardest to, to make it break even. Uh, cash flow is on page 11. This is actual money in and out. So if you look at sewer on that, even though it showed a loss on, on page 10, it still had positive cash at the end of the year. Cash overall increased by $525,000, and sewer even increased by $127,000. Um, and then, again, that shows at the bottom where all the cash comes from and what it's spent for. Any questions on the actual basic financial statements of sewer? There are lots and lots of notes that are required with these now. The first one is just to explain what the funds are about. Now, the first one would be in real interest. Probably. Um, page 21, air funder services and payables and uh, The general fund. This goes back some years when we said this as far as the uh, uh, business funds, water, sewer, sanitation, on the general fund, because there have been 
there were some years when it def they definitely weren't self-sufficient. And the general fund covered a lot of the expenses. So this is something that, you know, hopefully start to get in a position where you know, those can be paid back. Uh, transfers of funds. Page 22 shows changes in fixed assets. Uh, governmental, not a whole lot of additions. There are only 122,672 added. And then there were, uh, there were some things uh, sold, junk, written off, whatever. Um, so there were $244,000 in deletions. And then let me factor everything in. And net decreased by, uh, well, decreased by about $100,000. In the business type activities, uh, very very little deletions on that. There were some things added to it, some water sewer improvements, some machinery equipment, uh, construction in process. But uh, so that part uh, increased decreased by about one hundred nine thousand. In the bottom shows depreciation and how it was allocated. Page twenty three, and this this is debt. And if you look at the the uh, column for additions, additions to debt, you see there was none. Everything you did during the year last year was to repay debt. That again, that wasn't always the case here. You know, I can I can remember times when there was you know a fair amount of borrowing early in the year to wait for the taxes to come in and, and that kind of thing. So yeah. it's, it's been some time since you've had to deal with that. We've been blessed. You have, and you know, and and basically, you know. If you look at the you know general fund debt, you know it's basically just for all practical purposes you have two hundred thousand dollars a year. You're basically debt free for you know a right. this size. And then you know all these others at the bottom. You know they, this is all debt that was used to finance something of consequence. Uh, twenty four shows what it takes to pay those off. And twenty five. Of course, the big one now. It's been on here for a few years, so it's the middle of page 25, and this is all the disclosures on pension and OPEB funds. OPEB is other post-employment benefits, which is health insurance. That, mm -hmm. that all the governments in Kentucky that are participating in retirement are all are all subject to this. And, um, you can well, you, <clears throat> you can see if you go back to these. These numbers at the at the beginning. So if you go back to page four, if you look at uh, total liabilities, uh, net pension liability for the city as a whole was a million eight seventy six three thirty, and the OPEB liability was five hundred sixty three thousand two hundred sixty nine dollars. You know this is not anything that you have to pay back now. This is two and a half million dollars of liabilities that if the state one day decided to go around to all the cities oh, yeah. in Kentucky and, and hold their hand out. And that's what Harper would owe. Mm -hmm. There's some, there's a movement to work that down, and it is being worked down a little. Is there anything in the legislative yeah. body uh, on that right now? It's a tremendous burden, and, and Kentucky is not the worst uh, state in the nation on the pension, but it's it's very near the worst. Uh, page. Uh, 34 is a general fund budget. I don't think they're really any change about what you uh, what you probably seen before, but the revenues were a million two seventy five better than budgeted. The expenditures were hundred eighty six thousand dollars over the amount that was budgeted, but you know in total there was a million eighty eight five thirty eight and then then you go through these transfers uh, in and out and you then show the fund balance as a whole. Uh, you're you're basically budgeted to uh, have a uh, million five twenty nine eight fifty one, and you had three million seven thirty seven fifteen. So, so you know, your bottom line budget was two point two million dollars better than the amount that you budgeted for. There's several more pages of all this uh, pension and OPEP business. Page 41 just breaks down. The special revenue funds, these are all governmental. That's road, LGEA, and cemetery funds. Mm -hmm. See the income statement for them. Um, they all they all had an increase, but uh, 
the, um, the fund balance on the cemetery fund uh, is negative, and that comes from, I mean, the, you know, the money's there, but it owes it back to, to another fund. Yep. 43 just breaks down all the general fund expenditures. Oh, see. 44 and 45 is a required report that we do on internal control. Um, this is one that we don't very often get to do this, but there aren't really, there aren't really any findings at all on that. Right. The only thing we have is on 46. Um, we always, we do very often have to have some suggestions kind of thing. And the only thing here really that we noted was that now that you do have some money, you're running a little bit over on FDIC insurance, and you know, you're supposed to have that all secured by bonds, and it's it's awful. Well, that's just right. something you just work with the bank and make sure that they pledge enough securities to cover right. something if you have the bank. And I know that since that, uh, Lisa has already addressed yeah. all of that, so that that is taken care of. But like I said, compared, we've, we've been doing this for, I don't know, 11, 12 years, and what this looks like now compared to what it looked like when we right. first started, it's totally, totally good. Right day. It's in the right direction. Definitely in the right direction. And I, I appreciate y'all's work because it, I could not sit back there and look at all that paperwork all day long. So I, I, I appreciate y'all's work that you all do. So. Well, I've been doing this for 40 plus years. <laughs> so you've got the patience for it now, don't you? <laughs> so thank you for all doing that. Does anybody have any questions? All righty. Thank you, Dan. Huh? Do we have to approve that? No. That's just no. as is. Just a presentation. Have a safe trip home. Yep. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you. Uh, City Attorney, do you have anything to bring forward? You all kept me quite busy the last couple of months, so this has been a little quiet. Well, hang in there. we got more. Oh, I know. Time. I'm still working on Rachel's stuff that she's saying. So. <laughs> just hang on. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Um, all right. Before you have the financial reports, after being reviewed, I'll ask for a motion to accept the financial reports. I make the motion we accept the financial reports. I second. I have a first and second by first by Mary Bell, second by Stacia. All in favor say aye. 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 Polls like sigh, motion carries. Thank you. Okay, um, on old business, we're on the second reading on the ordinance number 2023-02 for the 2023-2024 final finance financial budget sorry um, I'm sure everybody's had time to look over that um, I'll ask for a motion to accept the ordinance First by I'll second. First by Tony. Second by Mary Bell. Okay, Ben's that this is an ordinance. We'll have to do a roll call vote. Um, yes. Sorry. Yes. 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 All yes. yes. All right. Thank you. Motion passes. Okay, um, well, that's all in old business. In new business, we have a first reading or ordinance 2023-03, alcohol license fees. Basically, it, it hasn't increased or anything. We just have to do this yearly. Um, so this this is just the first reading on that. If somebody wants to read that ordinance out loud for the public, uh, I'll be I'll be okay with that. I'll read it. Okay. An ordinance complying with KRS 243.070 and Section 1, Article 15F of Ordinance 2020-02, the Alcohol Beverage Control Ordinance, to establish the annual alcohol regulatory license fee. Thank you. So like I said, all that stays the same. There's no, no changes on that. So it's just something we have to do yearly. Okay. No, that'll be next meeting. Um, so we have a resolution 
that needs to be passed 2023-02. It's the Ellis Park resolution. Jeff, do you care to read that resolution, please? Whereas the city of Hartford proposed to renovate Ellis Park to provide for the health and well-being of the general public, and whereas the city of Hartford intends to make an application to the Department of Local Government for assistance under the Land and Water Conservation Fund Act of 1965, and whereas the Land and Water Con Conservation Fund is limited to funding a maximum of 50% of proposed project estimated at $175,359.52. Now therefore, be it re res resolved that the City of Hartford hold in a reserve 50% of the proposed project cost for the purpose of matching the Land and Water Conservation Fund assistance, and be it further resolved that in the event a grant is awarded, the City of Hartford understands that it will sign assurances to comply with all the applicable federal and state laws, rules, and regulations, especially Title IX of the Civil Rights Act and Section 504 huh. of the 1973 Rehabilitation Act. Okay. Thank you, Jeff. Does everybody understand, um, basically, this is a resolution that's stating that we will match the um, grant to to go forward with this project. Um, so this is a resolution saying that we accept this. Uh, with that being said, I'll ask for a motion to accept this resolution. I'll make a motion that we accept the resolution for the Ellis Park project. First by Stacia. I second. Second by Jeff. All in favor say aye. Aye. Polls like so. Motion carries. Thank you. I'm gonna get that. Do you have uh, a seat? Yeah, give me that for you. Okay. Um, visitors, did we have anybody that wants to discuss anything in the crowd? Okay. Um, with that being said, I'll ask for a roundtable discussion with the councils. Uh, Jeff, do you have anything? Uh, yep. Yeah, so, uh, working with uh, a gentleman from here in Hartford, Dwayne Bishop, is, is his name? He works with a, uh, a, a program that's called Aspire. It's a summer work experience. And so uh, he's asked if the city of Hartford would allow us to let these, I guess, young adults uh, work at Ellis Park. So the kind of things that we've talked about would be like weed eating, trimming, uh, not on the not on the riders or the heavy equipment, but you know, hand-operated equipment. Uh, and from uh, way I understand it, he, he he sent me this paper for you guys to look over. But there's certain some of the kids are only allowed to work certain hours a month. Yeah. Uh, so like he he sent me an example for two of the two of the gentlemen, two of the young guys working. One of them gets 13 hours, and the other one gets six hours. Uh, all the pay is co is coming from this Aspire. I think the only thing that we will probably have to do is provide the equipment uh, and then uh, maybe a work plan on what we want them to do, what they want to accomplish. You know, uh, we talked about, like I said, weeding, mowing, uh, push mowers, painting, uh, general cleanup with the trash and, and things like that. Uh, I'm, I'm also uh, considering, you know, I think we can work at the boat ramp. That's part of the city, you know, it's a park down there. Uh, we need the uh, walking path, mowing, mowing that, you know, and uh, taking care of that. Uh, I think it's kind of a win, you know, it's given the, uh, the, the youth uh, some experience. Dwayne, he would be the, uh, the adult there with them. Uh, so, and I think he gets like a three or four hours a day, I think, is how, how his uh, salary works out. But once again, that's paid by this Aspire work experience. Uh, so that's... I think, that's it's, I think it's a great... Uh, I think it's great that you looked into that. Um, I say we move forward on doing this, and if they need any paperwork for me to sign off on, uh, I say let's move on this. Okay. 
Um, does yeah, anybody I, have I, any objection to any of that? I think it's yeah. good. So I think uh, if they need any paperwork from me or Lisa to sign or Tara to sign. I was gonna say, I'm just, I, I would be curious as to what the contract says from like the insurance company. Well, I, I know I uh, probably have to link up with Jason, you know, maybe get you and Dwayne to meet and stuff. Yeah, this will be helpful. Yeah, I, yeah, you know, a, maybe even store equipment, a couple weed eaters and a mower up there at Ellis Park or something like that. Uh, that way it's it's there and they don't have to come down and, you know, so we can, we can get that. And I, and I know they're they're ready to start. Okay. I think I think the hours increase. You know, like maybe in July. From what I know right now, I think he has four employees, four four youth that are okay. uh, eligible. So. I appreciate your research in that. That it's tremendous. Thank you for that. Yeah. And, uh, and just let me know. What's like, the age period on it? Fourteen to twenty. Fourteen to twenty one. No, a twelve year old who's big. He looks like he's. <laughs> All right, thank you, Jim. Uh, David, do you have anything to bring to the table? <coughs> Just we, me and you and some board members need to get with Miss Phelps on the property of our about Ellis Park before we get okay. in the everything. So, okay. Because she's moving to Owensboro. She is? Yes. Okay. All right. Well, we can do that. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll put that on my list to get with you as well. Okay. Um, I don't have anything. I think everything's going pretty smoothly. I think um, all of our departments are doing good. We got our new fire truck. Uh, everybody's excited about that. Meredith's working on some events. Um, she'll be bringing those forward pretty quickly. I know that um, they've met with the with the committee on the uh, Oktoberfest, so they got some big things that they're wanting to bring forward. Uh, I think she's going to do some more scavenger hunts and water days and stuff like that. So she's going to be bringing us a presentation to do all that with. She don't tell me too much because I like to tell everybody what we're doing. She likes to surprise everybody. So. <laughs> um, I don't have nothing other than that. Um, she's not here. To, I was going to praise Ronnie. Um, I saw her work in action the other day. She had stopped at a home and had brought to their attention they needed to address their yard and the next thing I know their yard was addressed so I think that's going well yeah that's one of the, and she's unique in that way because she she can go with them and talk to them and go to their level with them where they're aggravated so it's it's a unique job and Jeff done it for a long time he knows it's it's not the best gl glorious job to have if somebody's got to do it so other than that, I don't have anything. Thank you. Jerry, do you have anything? You're awful quiet over there. Well, I've been that way most of the day, and I'm trying, planning to stay there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm like Stacy. I think Ronnie was doing a wonderful job. Um, just for, just for the councils uh, as well, we did send uh, letters for abandoned properties. I think we had 20, 26 on the list. Um getting some emails, getting some phone calls, but hey, we're going we're gonna yeah. to do the steps that we have to do to do the right thing. So, And I'll get with you later on and go for there. Uh, and I think she's doing a good job. She is. She's in the place on Clay Street that looks a little bit better. Yeah. yeah she's, I said it'll stay that way. And you know, she's, yeah, she's doing a really good job. Yeah. yeah. Tony, do you have anything to bring forward? All right. Mayor, I'm going to say uh, I think that the paving job done on Iron Mountain Road is probably the smoothest road we've ever had. <laughs> it looks good. I don't, yeah. <laughs> let's, let's head up Peach Alley next if we can. Mayor, I want to thank Jason and oh, yeah. his, his, his crew. Yeah. What they did down here on Union Street. We had a big hole come in the yard. Part of our town comes from Union Street over on the other street. We we'll run right through this yard, and it was a sinkhole. <laughs> it went from a little hole to a, a sinkhole. We'll make the same deal we we'll make with everybody else. They bought the tile, and we fixed it. You just couldn't understand why 
the majority of white people. I said, Churchill was on us. Well, it was everybody. You know, it, it, it was deeper than we thought it was. And it was all. We had to make a stopping point because we were here at 6 30 in the morning. So we got it all dressed up. Thank you. We had a suit and we were about to dress up. And we did get we did reimburse it. We did get to check the other day. Um, I want to thank Jeannie for traveling from grad and assisting Jeff and I with the grant process. God bless you. I would not want to gather all the grant information, but thank you. And, and that's something that's unique, y'all. Um, if you thank it, I guarantee it, grad can find it. All right. Um, and that's why it's a good resource to have. Uh, I'm telling you, uh, I'm thankful for grad. So. Did, Thank you did, for we, coming. did we meet all the requirements for? Yeah, I basically got the application finished. I just had to get signatures. So, awesome. um, well, with Five that minutes. being done, will that be one of the things? And I don't care to travel up there with you all. Uh, well, we have. It's better to do a presentation in Frankfurt once that's done. So once that's done, we'll do a presentation, and it's better to show your face than grad doing it. So. I will go up with you all to do that presentation. Um, it's it's important to show your face and the interest in it. So, all right. With that being said, I'll I'll ask for a motion to adjourn this meeting. I make a motion. <laughs> you First time he said something. I'm taking his. I'm sorry. I can't say it worse. <laughs> I'm taking Jerry's. <laughs> I'll second it. I'll second it. No, All in favor say aye. Uh, uh, <laughs> Thank you First all. First time since Big Shenanigans to get out of here. Y'all have a good weekend. <laughs> Holiday weekend.